Hey guys, real quick, before we get started on the video, please check out the podcast that I am currently co-hosting with Sweaty Spooks called the Blueberry Lounge. We also have a Discord and a clan that is seeking new members. Come join us. Yo, what up, what up, what up? Native Raider here. And in today's video, I got a PvE endgame Void Titan build for you. And it's more like three builds in one. Now that we do have the new loadouts that we can hot swap different things, it works very, very well. I've taken this in the day one contest Root of Nightmare raid. I've also completed Legend Solo Lost Sectors with it. I mean, it's it's very versatile and all around for any kind of PvE content. Also, I did want to apologize. I haven't had a build video out in a while. I wanted to make sure I understood all the new mechanics and mod systems before I just throw something out there that might not be as viable as it could be. So I made sure I double checked a lot of different things and ran it through its good testing and experimentation phases. So you guys can just throw this on and go out there and start slaying. I've also been pretty busy now that I am a co-host on a podcast called The Blueberry Lounge. I invite you guys to check it out link will be in the description below we also have a clan and a discord so check us out but you're not here for that you're here for the build so without further ado let's get it even when there's no hope you can still go i never answered a no man i still go 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 all right, so let's start off with the subclass and the super we're running is Ward of Dawn, of course. We have Rally Barricade, we got Stray Flip, we have Shield Throw and Vortex Grenades. Aspects, I'm running Offensive Bulwark and Bastion. As for the Fragments, we are running Echo of Undermining, giving us that weakened debuff on targets that we throw a grenade at. And then we have Echo of Domineering. Now this one, you can swap out to whatever you want. I just did this for the plus 10 in this one as I needed it for this build. And then Echo of Instability, where we defeat targets with our grenades and it'll grant us volatile rounds. Now this is what you want to make sure that you have everything set the same because we are gonna be swapping to different loadouts. If any of these in these boxes are different, it's gonna screw you over and you know, you're super, everything's gonna refresh. So make sure that everything is the same on all your loadouts. And speaking of loadouts, let's dive into it. I told you there's three loadouts for this one build to take into the raid or Legend Lost Sector or whatever you wanna do. So you have this one right here. This is your neutral game build that you're gonna be using this probably 90% of the time. And then you have this one here. This will be your damage dealing, i.e. your boss fight build to get the max amount of damage using what we're gonna be using. And then you have this one here. Then that is for you to regenerate ammo for yourself and your team. This is, uh, yeah, definitely necessary in certain parts of the raid and, uh, you know, when GMs come around and stuff like that. So it's these three right here. Let's go ahead and dive into the neutral game one first. Starting off with the hitbeast on our neutral game build, we got the Void Strand Dual Siphon. We got powerful friends because we're just going to be great teammates <laughs> to, to our fire team. We got Ashes to Asset, gain super energy on grenade kills. Uh, yeah, this, this one's going to be a lot about it creating orbs of power and uh, staying alive. Onto the gauntlets, we have Heavy Handed, your powered melee final blows, create orbs of power. Momentum transfer, causing damage with your grenade reduces your melee cooldown. And firepower, your grenade final blows, create orbs of power. For our chess piece, we are using the exotic chess piece called Actium War Rig, where it steadily reloads portions of your equipped auto rifle or machine guns and magazines from reserves and provides a moderate benefit to airborne effectiveness stat of auto rifles and machine guns. We will be using a machine gun and an auto rifle, so double dipping on this one. For the chess mods, we are going a little bit tankier with this. We got Font of Endurance, where you gain bonus resilience if you have an armor charge at all. Um, this build I am running at an 84 resilience if you have it already at 100 when you're making this build Don't worry about this one. Go ahead and slot something else And then we got emergency reinforcement another tanky type mod where when your shields become broken you gain Temporary damage reduction consumes three or more stacks of your armor charge all right, on to the leg armor for this build. We got Invigoration, reduces the melee cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power, as well as Innervation doing the same thing, but for your grenades, we're creating lots of orbs of power with this, so this helps really get our abilities back quickly. And then we have Stacks on Stacks, picking up an orb of power again, <laughs> grants us an additional stack of armor charge. And then on to our Titan Mark, we have Time Dilation, that allows our armor charges to last a lot longer. We have a Bomber, reducing your grenade cooldown when you are using your class ability, and Outreach, reducing your melee down when using your class ability so again back into trying to get regen our abilities as fast as possible 
All right, so that was the neutral game loadout. Let's jump into the boss damage loadout. All right, let's start out with the headpiece. We have strand targeting. We have radiant light. We're casting our super, causing nearby allies to increase their current armor charge by one. If they have a different subclass, it will increase their charge by two. And then we have void targeting. Moving on to the gauntlets, we have void loader twice, and then we have void dexterity. For the chest piece, this one's pretty simple as well. We got double charged up. For our Titan boots, we're running triple void weapon surge as our LMG is void and this will give you a 33% damage increase. And then finally at the mark, we're running a double time dilation that allows that armor charge to stay as long as possible because we want our void weapon surge to stay as long as possible. And that brings us to our third and final loadout, this being the ammo generation. Let's dive right into it. All right, for the headpiece, we're running a double heavy ammo finder. We also have an exotic primary weapon, so it should help us find ammo a little bit quicker. And then we have a heavy ammo scout. When uh, we create a brick from our ammo finder perks, it creates one for our allies. And for our gauntlets, this is our exotic piece, Aeon Safe. With this, you want to have Sect of Insight on. When you use a finisher on an elite, you generate special ammo for your fire team. When you use a finisher on a boss or mini boss, you generate heavy ammo for your fire team. Very, very nice to have and generate ammo. That's what this loadout is all about. We got Stripple Strand Loader for our exotic primary that we'll get into a little bit after this. Moving on to the chest piece, we have double charged up mods again. Again, increasing the maximum number of stacks you can carry by one. And then for the legs, we got a triple strand weapon surge, increasing our strand weapon damage by 33% with all three equipped. And then finally, on to the mark, we have double time dilation to keep that strand armor surge up as much as possible, similar to the one in the boss fight build. And then moving on to the weapon, starting up with our kinetic slot, we got the quick silver storm. This is an absolute beauty of a weapon. This one is almost like having a primary and a special uh, weapon, like all combined into one. I mean, it has these beautiful grenades where after, you know, shooting for a while and hitting those micro rockets, it'll start to load a grenade max at three. You can switch it into the great grenade launcher mode and just absolutely deal ridiculous damage for a primary to like yellow bars and whatnot that's what i mainly use them for came in clutch during the root of nightmares raid on uh the planets um thing when you had to take out the colossuses that spawn in order to pick up your planets and swap them no spoilers my bad and uh with that being said i also have the catalyst on it that makes it a strand weapon so you saw all those mods for strand weapons that's why and this also does leave you a tangle when you kill somebody with that grenade very very nice and then of course the rocket tracers which just do nice little chunk damage we have acumor rig so that 50 round mag that you see down here is more probably around 75 to 80 don't quote me on that but uh yeah lots of sustained damage and burst damage with this one you know kinetic weapon and then I also do enjoy having my Wish Ender right there in my inventory, do a quick hot swap and take care of those annoying pesky barrier champs. And then for our energy slot, I am running the Enigma. This is the glaive, the very first glaive introduced into the game. It is craftable. It has Rampage and Grave Rubber. Great synergy with these two. I can sit there and do quite good damage from range when firing this weapon and then a quick reload with the Grave Robber. And I also have a major spec on it. Another thing to note is psycho hack origin trait is really nice when taking on some you know some tanky beefy like yellow bars um sustained damage with this weapon lowers the target's damage output for a short period i mean how great is that for something that's so up close and personal where you're probably gonna be getting hit by you know their melee stomps or something like that so that is what i'm running in this slot uh if you don't like it uh likely suspect is another great one or whatever you want to put in here i personally enjoy this the shield also comes in clutch at times and let's dive into this last one, Retrofit Escapade. With Retrofit Escapade, it is just beautiful, especially with Akim War Rig and that, you know, weapon surges that we have for our boss fight loadout. On top of that, we got target lock where damage is increased by an improved amount. The longer this weapon remains on target, it's just getting more and more lethal. And then we got fourth times a charm where rapidly landing those percentage hits will return two rounds to the magazine. I mean, that does pair up again with active war rig. You are never really going to have to reload this thing very often, especially during a boss phase. And then of course, a boss spec for the boss phase. 
I know that was a lot to cover. We had three different loadouts that we went through. We talked all of them. We talked the subclass. We talked the weapons and what you would like to probably have just to deal with certain things. But we have one last thing before we show just a little bit of gameplay, and that is the artifact. Let's dive into it. Starting with the first row here, this column, we're going to be running this Overload Auto SMG that gives us, you know, overload rounds to take out those overload champs and uh, also causes them to be overcharged, which is super nice. And that works perfectly with what we are running on this with Quicksilver Storm. These two, um, those are in there in order to unlock the next column. I hate that Bungie had, had did that to where you still have to unlock three to get to the next one. But hey, it is what it is for the second column. We're running multi-siphon mods. That's how we got access to that strand void uh, combo mod. And then we have authorized mods for grenades for Void and for Strand, making them a lot cheaper and allowing us to run those triple um, weapon surge ones, uh, the one for Strand and the one for Void in the builds you saw. We got Shattered Orbs the first time that you break a combatant shield, create an orb of power. Remember how many different ways we're creating orbs of power with this one, with the neutral game build? Amazing. So add that to it. Volatile Flow, beautiful pick up orb of power, all the rounds with Action War Rig, with Retrofit Escapade, with Target Lock. I mean, you're just doing so much damn damage. It is beautiful. And then we got Origin Hones, and that's, uh, you know, increasing our Ambush uh, Origin trait for our um, Retrofit Escapade. And then we have Bricks from Beyond, defeating powerful combatants with Void Weapon, has a chance to generate heavy ammo for you and your fire team. So that's another great one for our build that is our um, ammo generation build. You know, if you're really sucking on ammo like that, pull something out, start waxing dudes with your glaive, and there you go. You should be able to unlock some bricks for you and your fire team. And then Medieval Champion. Now this allows our glaive to stun unshielded combatants and strong against unstops. So now we got both of those covered as far as overload and unstop. And then we also do have the wish ender for the barriers when needed. And then finally for stat prioritization, um, definitely resilience, get as high as possible. Recovery is always an uh, important one, dealing with high-end PvE content. And then your grenades, I think, are, these are the three that you want to focus on. And then uh, subsequently, probably build into strength. Don't worry too much about intellect. We're gonna, I mean, you saw how many orbs of power we're creating with this build. That's not really a big thing to deal with, and neither is mobility. That is your stat prioritization for this build and all three loadouts. All right, so with that being said, that covers the build. I'll show off some gameplay right after this, but I mean, do me a favor, like, subscribe to the channel, check out the podcast, join the Discord, join the clan, come have fun with us, let's all grind together, and uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Enjoy the gameplay.
And if you did enjoy that video, please hammer strike that like, shoot that sub, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.